In this video, I want to talk about how to name ionic compounds. So the first example that I want to go over is a simple one, NaCl. So first, what exactly is a compound? A compound is a substance that is composed of two different elements. So in this compound, we have the element Na, which stands for sodium. And Cl is the element chlorine. So because we have two different elements in this substance, it's considered to be a compound. But now what makes it an ionic compound? Ionic compounds are those that are composed of ions. We have the sodium ion and the chloride ion. A positively charged ion is known as a cation, and a negatively charged ion is known as an anion. Now keep in mind, the way you name the anion is you change the ending from I-N-E to I-D-E. And so this is important. You want to make sure you take note of this fact. When naming an anion, you need to add the suffix I-D-E. So to name NaCl, it's called sodium chloride. Now let's try another example, MgBr2. So what do you think we need to do in order to name this particular ionic compound? If you want to try it, go ahead. So the first thing you need to do is name the first element. So what is the name for Mg? If you use a periodic table, this is called magnesium. Now the second element, Br, stands for bromine. However, we need to replace, well let's write it first. Now instead of writing bromine, we need to replace the last three letters with IDE. So this is going to be bromide. And that's how you can name MgBr2. It's called magnesium bromide. So remember, when naming ionic compounds, you simply need to write the name of the first element. But for the second one, make sure to add the suffix IDE. Now let's try some other examples. Let's name these two ionic compounds, CaO and ALP. So what do you think the names are for these two compounds? CA stands for what element? CA is called calcium. O stands for oxygen. However, the last three letters has to be IDE. So instead of writing oxygen, we're going to write oxide. And so that's how you can name that particular ionic compound. Now what about the next one? ALP. AL stands for aluminum and P is phosphorus but it's going to be called phosphide. So this is aluminum phosphide. So it's not very difficult to name ionic compounds. But there are some more challenging examples. You need to be familiar with certain polyatomic ions. Now I'm not going to go over all of them, but just a few. So for instance, you need to know that NO3 minus, this is called nitrate. NO2 minus with one less oxygen, this is called nitrite. And you'll see this pattern often. ATE has one more oxygen than ITE. Some other polyatomic ions you want to be familiar with is PO4-3-. This is known as phosphate. You may want to write these down, by the way. PO3-3-, this is phosphite. SO4- 2 minus, this is called 
sulfate and SO3 2 minus is known as sulfite. Now some other ones that you want to be familiar with is OH minus. This is called hydroxide. And then you have CN minus. That's known as cyanide. CrO4 2 minus. This is called chromate. And if you see Cr2 O7 2 minus, that's called dichromate. Now, there are some other ones, but let's stick with that. So based on the list that you saw previously, how can we use that list to name the following compounds? So first, we need to look at the first element, K. Using the periodic table, K stands for potassium. So that is the K plus ion. The second one is a polyatomic ion. It's the NO3 minus ion, which is called nitrate. And so this is how we name KNO3. It's simply potassium nitrate. Now for the next one, we have CA, which stands for calcium. And SO4 is called sulfate. So combined, this is calcium sulfate. And so it's very straightforward to name ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. It's not that difficult. You have to memorize the polyatomic ions. There's no other way around it. Now the next example that we are going to go over involves transition metals. So let's try these two examples. The first one is FeCl2 and the second one FeCl3. Now how would you name these two compounds? Looking at the first one, Fe is called iron and Cl is chlorine but for an ionic compound we're going to use the word chloride. Well, we can apply the same thing to FeCl3. It also would be called iron chloride. However, we can't apply the same name to two different compounds. So we need something else. We need something more. It turns out that FeCl2 is called iron 2 chloride, and FeCl3 is iron 3 chloride. And the reason for that is the FeCl2 compound contains the Fe2 plus ion, whereas FeCl3, it contains the Fe3 plus ion. And so when dealing with certain transition metals, you need to use the Roman numeral to indicate the charge or the oxidation state of the ion. Now let's try this one, CuS. How can we name this particular ionic compound? Well, we know that Cu stands for copper. S is sulfur, but we need the end in IDE, so copper sulfide. But now is it copper 1 sulfide, copper 2 sulfide, copper 3 sulfide? Which one is it? Well, we need to determine the charge on the copper atom, or rather the copper ion. And so first we need to chart, uh, excuse me, determine the charge on the sulfur anion. Now sulfur is a calcogen found in group 6A of the periodic table and those elements they form negative 2 charged anions. Now copper has to have the same charge in order to balance the charges of the compound. So copper has to be 2 plus. And you can write an equation to find the answer. If you write Cu plus S and Notice that the net charge of this entire compound is zero. So you set it equal to zero. And we know that sulfur has a minus two charge. So solving for copper, we need to add two to both sides. So thus copper has a two plus charge. And so we're going to call it copper two sulfide. Now let me give you another example. Let's name this one Cu2S. So we know it's going to be copper sulfide, but the oxidation state is different. So let's write an equation. 
This time we have two copper atoms, one sulfur atom, and the net charge has to add up to zero. So since we're solving for copper, let's replace it with an X. Sulfur has a minus two charge. So if we add two to both sides of the equation, we'll get two X is equal to two. And then we'll have to divide both sides by two. Two divided by two is one. So in this case, copper has a positive one charge. Sulfur has a negative two charge. And so we need two copper plus ions to neutralize the negative two charge of the sulfur ion. So this is going to be called copper one sulfide because the oxidation state on copper is positive one. And that's basically it for naming ionic compounds. And so make sure you practice this because that's really how you're going to learn it. And if you do that, you're going to get better at this stuff. So that's it for this video. For those of you who haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to this channel and turn on that notification bell. So thanks again for watching.